welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another episode of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And I'm excited today, um, very excited to revisit a product that I wrote about on Experts Exchange um, 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, 2014. Um, I wrote about the product, um, which is called Double Take Move. Um, it's changed its name a little bit, but it's still exactly the same, and it still does what it says on the tin. It's now called Double Take Migrate, and it's had a few different companies um, that have owned the product over the years. Um, back in 2014, it was owned by Vision Solutions, and then it was owned by Carbonate, Carbonite, uh, and more recently it's now owned by Open Text. But don't let that put you off, because the same business unit and the same employees still head up Double Take Migrate, Double Take Move today. And, and I must thank um, Jonathan and Andy at Double Take uh, or Open Text now um, for these migration licenses that they've um, um, let me borrow um, for this lab. Uh, and I just wanted to make um, a couple of comments about the licenses that I have. You know, I have a, a great working relationship with these guys. Um, that give me licenses uh, to use in the lab. And I've spoken to uh, a few V experts and I've spoken to a few sysadmins um, in, uh, in the industry. And the sort of kind of feedback that I sort of kind of get is, um, well, if they don't have an evaluation of the product, I'm not using it. Um, so I'm going to cross that off the list. Well, take it from me and read the article, watch this video, that the product works. It doesn't really require any evaluation. But of course, the big problem with it is, is that if open text actually give you licenses, um, then of course you can actually basically migrate your workloads for free. And that's not really what the organization is about. So, um, you know, try not to nag the guys uh, for trial licenses or free licenses. Um, you know, if you do have a budget and you do have a real business case, um, because we are in that difficult environment now uh, where we are going to be migrating physical and virtual and cloud based workloads uh, that require real time replication and we'll be wanting to move them from VMware vSphere to Hyper-V or Hyper-V uh, to VMware vSphere or to Promox or AWS or Azure or where, what other other hypervisors that you actually basically want to move, move them to in, the, in these uncertain times. So without further ado, I'm going to show you again um, but I'm going to show, but this time rather than writing about it, I'm actually basically going to show you in real time by using a video. So I'm going to put this link in the description um, so you can have a read uh, about the product uh, in the article that I wrote over 10 years ago. Uh, but I'm just going to explain what we've actually got in the lab here. And, and I'm going to do a couple of things. You know, uh, back in 2014, I actually basically uh, demonstrated or wrote about actually replicating. Um, workloads with real-time to VMware vSphere. What we're going to do in this lab today, we're going to replicate a Windows VM from VMware vSphere to Hyper-V. And I'm going to replicate a Ubuntu Linux VM from Hyper-V to VMware vSphere. So we're going to do two things, uh, hopefully at the same time. Um, so I'm going to sort of kind of show you what we've got here in, in our lab. Um, so this is the, the console that we're actually going to use. This is the Carbonate or OpenText Migrate console that we're actually going to use. So don't worry yourself about that at the moment. Um, 
Here we've got uh, RDP connection into our BDR backup server, our BDR backup window server, which currently is hosted uh, in a VMware vSphere environment, happens to be on vSphere 7. And finally, um, up here, loads of windows. Up here, uh, we've actually got our uh, Linux, uh, an Ubuntu Linux machine called Test LMS, uh, which is actually Logitech Media Server. Uh, and that's actually basically hosted currently on Hyper-V, Test-LMS. So what we're gonna see, and we've got our VMware vSphere lab, our EE lab over here, which is actually basically running on version eight. So there's a lot going on here. Um, but what we're going to see, we're going to eventually see a test LMS virtual machine appear in our vSphere 8 lab. And we're going to see a BDR backup machine appear on our Hyper-V server. So that's what we're going to hopefully do. And the reason that I'm actually basically wanting to use uh, Logitech Media Server, um, because it basically has some music on running Linux and it drives my uh, Logitech media server as well, which you can hear in the background. So, you know, we can, so what I'm gonna do as well, I'm gonna demonstrate one of the, the other features, the replication feature that's used um, by Carbonate Migrate. So whilst we actually synchronize the, the workloads first, and then we're going to make some subtle changes to our Windows machine. And I'm going to make some changes to the Linux machine, the LMS server. Uh, and we'll rescan that server and we'll basically bring some music in. And uh, then we'll refresh a couple of times when it actually basically starts up on the vSphere host. And, uh, and hopefully it all works. So that's what we're going to try and do. So the first thing I actually want to show you... Uh, I'm not going to, going to go into the, the real details of um, how we actually basically set all this up. Um, but I'll just zoom in here on the Carbonate console. But I want to uh, talk to you for a few minutes about what double take calls targets and what double take calls source. So obviously the source machine um, is not brain source. Uh, the source machine is the workload that you want to migrate and quite simply uh, you install the carbonite migrate software uh, onto the machine that you want to migrate um, you can install the software from the console and you can actually license the software um, from the console so if you actually basically look at my machines here that i want to protect or i want to migrate test lms here is currently licensed and the other one that we're going to use here BDR backup uh, is also licensed as well so the only servers that need licensing are the servers that you want to migrate and that's what we refer to as the source servers the targets don't require a license but they are referred to as recovery appliances recovery appliances yeah or, or VRA helpers and these can be Windows or they can be Linux and they actually basically sit on the platform that you want to migrate to so um, if I just look at Ubuntu 5 here Ubuntu 5 um, is a blank vanilla Ubuntu VM currently sitting um, on, uh, I do apologize about that dog barking at my window. Um, but so Ubuntu 5 is a Ubuntu machine that's basically currently sitting on our vSphere 8. And we've also got, if I go back to the console, uh, we're also basically using um, uh, Cyrus Hyper V. We've got a number of Hyper V hosts here as well. Um, that we're actually basically going to send, uh, that we're going to use as VRA helpers as well. So the targets are not licensed, um, but those are helper machines that are used in the process to complete the replication. Um, and a bit like VMware, 
a VMware vCenter converter standalone where we can do a sync. Uh, we can synchronize and then at a point in time, we can actually basically issue a cutover. And then it's when it performs the final migration, shuts down the source machine and powers up the final target migrated machine on the environment that we want. So without further ado, again, um, I'm going to go to our machine that we actually basically want to migrate. And if I go back here and we look at our Hyper-V machine, then you can see here test LMS is currently hang on. Tell you what, I'll zoom in on that one as well so you can see it a little bit clearer. OK, so test LMS is currently running uh, on our Hyper-V machine and we're going to migrate this to our vSphere 8 environment. So I'm just going to go right click and I'm going to click migrate. Uh, I'm just going to. It's not fitting on my screen now, so let's just uh, take the down. So, so I'm going to do a full server to ESXA migration. It's going to select all the partitions, uh, root, boot, boot, FE, and I'm going to click next. It now wants me to select the the target, the helper machine that's going to help us do this migration. So I'm going to pick Ubuntu 5 because I know that Ubuntu 5 is actually currently uh, sitting on our vSphere 8a environment, which is here. So it actually has worked out that that is currently actually basically hosted by vCenter 8a, uh, magic. Um, so I'm going to click next. It's now basically going to go and give us a little job options. So the job name, so I'm just going to say uh, test one. It's going to migrate to ESX003, that's fine. I'm going to pick the data store for it to migrate it to. So this is where now you can change the, the name of the virtual machine um, that's going to be in the inventory. You can now actually basically select how many sockets and cores that you want. I'm actually going to turn around and say that I want to use the VMF, VMX Net 3 driver. Uh, so I'm going to basically say, well, carry on and connect to my VM network. Um, OK, uh, I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to create a new disk, but I want to create a uh, thin provision disk. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to make any changes to Networking, but if I wanted to change, make change. If I wanted to change uh, networking in the machine, if I was actually basically migrating, migrating to a different subnet, uh, then I've got the ability to here to actually basically uh, change those IP addresses as well. Um, I'm going to wait for the user to initiate the failover. So I'm actually going to manually go in and hit a button and turn around and say, right, failover now, please. And I wanted to shut down the source server, um, that HP source server. Um, if I didn't actually basically shut down the server, of course, the IP addresses would actually basically give me a conflict. Um, and you obviously got you can, you can enable compression. Um, you can use uh, bandwidth limitations if you're basically across a WAN, etc. And you don't want to use that. So I'm going to basically click next. Now it does some real magic and it actually basically goes and does an awful lot of checking. And there's one thing that we found, one tip that I'm going to give you here. If you're actually basically using this product, um, we found that we had volume group name conflicts when we migrate Ubuntu because the template that we use in the lab here to deploy Ubuntu Linux uses the same volume LVM, LVM, Logical Volume Manager group name. Um, so we couldn't use our template again, so we actually quickly spun up a different template that uses a different volume group. So I'm going to click finish. And I'm going to basically just creating the rep machine. So I'm going to let that tick along in the background there. Uh, that's going to start up and that's actually going to start synchronizing and mirroring the data. Um, so what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to create another job now. Uh, and I was actually talking to Jonathan and he did give me some figures as to how many actual jobs that you can do 
uh, and sorry, Jonathan, it went in one ear and it went out the other. But he did give me some amazing figure to how many actual jobs that you could convert. And he actually basically turned around and said the limitation was actually basically on uh, the hypervisor and not, not their product. Um, OK, so I'm going to do the same thing with BDR Backup. So I'm going to say Migrate. And this time we're going to migrate it. Of course, this is already... So I'm going to do a full server the Hyper-V migration, followed by Next. And I'm going to use Cyrus Hyper-V 1. That's the Hyper-V server that I actually want to migrate it to. Similar thing, it's actually basically getting some job options for me. Uh, it's asking me where I actually basically want to copy it to. So I'm quite happy with F. I'm quite happy that the job name is BDR Backup. I'll call it BDR Backup 1. Uh, I'm quite happy that the name is BDR Backup Replica. I'm quite happy that the Ethernet source is there. Uh, so I'm quite happy with, with those settings. So I'm just going to say Next. And it's basically going to go off and do some checking. And I've got a lot of green there. So I'm just basically going to turn around and say Finish. And that's basically now uh, starting. So let's have a little go back to our uh, mirror required calculating replication status ready, active and Linux. And this one is provisioning. Um, so with that, I'm just going to put this on pause um, and we will um, catch up when it's actually basically completed the mirroring. Um, okay, so you can sort of kind of see here now, it's actually basically saying synchronizing and it's 4.4% uh, at the moment. And how's this one progressing? And this one's initializing virtual, virtual disk. So I'll put this on pause and we'll come back when that uh, mirroring process has finished. And again, you know, if you were actually basically using this in production, then, you know, you could complete this at any time of the day. Um, as I said before in the article that I did previously, um, we've not seen any uh, performance impact on the source machines that we are migrating. And you can see here that we've already sent 2.2 gig across the wire. 11.1 uh, remaining, you know, on that particular virtual machine. So again, you know, we haven't seen any performance impact on the initial seeding, if you want to call it seeding, or mirroring uh, of the data. So you could do this at any time you like, and then you could actually basically obtain uh, through change control uh, and basically do the cutovers at the weekend uh, so you're not uh, basically causing um, a great amount of, of downtime. Uh, so, as I said, I'll put this on pause and we'll come back when this is finished. Uh, and then we'll make some changes to those virtual machines in hope that that information is captured and mirrored uh, to the target. And then basically we will basically issue that cutover uh, whilst it actually basically spins up. But if I just sort of kind of go back again and hopefully are we going to see, you know, any changes at all there? Whilst it's actually basically mirroring at the moment, you know, that uh, server uh, you know, is able quite happily uh, to be able to um, mirror that data over whilst this is actually basically streaming across my network in real time to the Logitech media player in the rack there. Uh, and as you can hear, you know, there's no detrimental effect uh, on on the transmission there. Um, so let's just finally go back before I put this on pause. So, you know, we're at 30% there. Um, and again, you know, this is lab equipment that we're using here as well. So you know, this isn't fully productionized equipment here. You know, like as I said, you know, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got three now. Uh, you know, we've got three HP microserver Gen uh, eights, you know, um, so, you know, this, this lab really, um, you know, it's not a top notch machines are being uh, mirrored now to the target 
destinations. So I'm just going to create a folder on the desktop of the BDR backup, which if you remember is a VMware vSphere virtual machine. Uh, and I'm going to, co I'm going to copy some um, uh, data um, into that. So <clears throat> I'm going to copy a VMware vCenter server 8.0 ISO uh, to our test for EE video folder. Uh, that's a nice big 10 gig file. Uh, so that's a big change. Um, but just uh, while that's copying, uh, you can see now on our VMware vCenter Server 8, our EE uh, lab version, uh, that we've already got the test-lms replica, um, which is actually basically currently in our VMware vCenter Server that's been partially migrated. We've not cut over yet. It's not been powered on yet but being partially migrated. And if we have a little look, if we go back to our RDP session on our Hyper-V host, uh, then you can see that we've got our BDR backup replica created as well. So effectively, really, we've replicated sort of kind of both ways. Um, we've replicated, moved, migrated a virtual machine from Hyper-V to VMware vSphere and from VMware vSphere to Hyper-V. Um, so, if we go back to our Kibernate, Carbonate, Carb, Carbonate console, um, I haven't been drinking, honest. Um, so, um, we're now basically ready, so let's pretend that we've basically got scheduled downtime, uh, we're at the weekend, we're out of hours, we're in the middle of the night, um, you can see there that that just quickly basically popped up and said replicated. So it's actually basically sending those changes uh, that I've been making on the BDR backup server there. So that copy there. Um, so as I said, this is a live virtual machine at the moment. Um, and that's all being replicated to the replica. Um, and at the moment, this is hosted on VMware vSphere. Uh, but we've migrated that to Hyper-V. So if you're in a situation at the moment where your VMware vSphere licensing renewal is absolutely massive and you have decided that it is about time to kick, sadly, uh, VMware into touch and move off the VMware vSphere platform and go back to Hyper-V, which you probably already have licenses for at the moment, um, then this is... Uh, definitely a product for you. You know, this is far superior to your VMware converters, your disk to VHD, um, your Starwind V to V and all the other mechanisms out there. Uh, you know, this is really the dog's bollocks um, of migration tools. And I've been using double take software um, I don't think there isn't a time when I've not used double take software in my 30 something year career um, in IT, to be honest with you. Um, it's a product that's always been there, that's always worked for us. Um, and I'm glad that um, it's still in business today. Uh, it might have a new owner, um, but the business unit still exists and um, I don't think there are many organizations or software products around uh, that can uh, that have that pedigree today so um, I'm just actually going to show you what I've actually done um, so if we go back to our Hyper-V if I go back to our test let's just zoom out here I did have a console connection, but it seems to have disappeared. There it is. Um, so I have actually basically now updated the music source on this server. Uh, I created a folder called Back in Black, and I actually basically copied the Back in Black ACDC. Um, so just to sort of kind of prove that that is actually on this server, that it is currently replicating, I'm just going to rescan 
um, that music mount to suck in and index those MP3 files or FLAC files that I've actually basically copied there. Um, and once it's actually basically done that, in a couple of seconds, um, I will then be able to, I thought I had hit the button that said rescan. Let's just do, do a refresh. View scan details, 634. Maybe it was that quick, I didn't notice. I'm just gonna say new music, and there we go. So back in black is there. Um, just to give you some idea. So I've copied some data to that server and uh, hopefully that's all been replicated across now to our target. So uh, let's go back to the Carbonite console and I'm now going to select uh, fail or cut over. I could hit the little button here. And I'm going to say cut out of the live data and I'm going to click cut over. And you'll start to see the process where it says failing over here, fail over here. And if we sort of kind of basically get up the, these consoles again, I get my Hyper V one up. Um, then we should actually basically see that the Hyper-V server basically is going to go off um, and we will see that the test LMS replica here in our VMware vCenter server environment, our EE cluster lab, our EE data center, uh, basically gets turned on um, as that process is being completed. So many windows here. And it's still saying failover, still saying failover. And what we'll do, um, maybe we'll also basically at the same time we'll do failover and we'll fail that one over as well. Um, so we've now got basically two products that are failing over. Okay, and you can see that the test LMS is off on our Hyper-V server and we can now see that test LMS replica is currently on and our server obviously, obviously is booting. So I've not had to create any virtual machines, I've not need to inject any drivers, I've not need to change any IP addresses. Uh, Carbonite Migrate or OpenText Migrate, its new name, has done all the heavy lifting completely automated. Uh, so if I just do refresh, uh, hopefully, okay, it's doing some changes at the moment. It's doing some changes and manipulations of uh, the networking in the Linux, Ubuntu Linux host. If we have a little look at uh, our connection here into our, this was our BDR backup server. So our BDR backup server has been transferred from, so it's actually basically turned, it's not quite turned off yet, or maybe I just need to refresh. So we've not quite actually basically shut down the BDR backup server on our VMware environment. And if we have a little look at our Hyper-V environment, uh, we're still off there. So let's just have a little look at where we are on the console. So that's failing over. So that's not quite ready yet. And that's failed over. So, um, so Carbonite Migrate now tells us that we have failed over. So what were we doing? Just to recap, we had a Linux Ubuntu 2204 LTS server running on Hyper-V called test-LMS. Happens to be my Logitech Media server. And I actually thought 
that I would actually demonstrate and use a Linux virtual machine on Hyper-V because I hear an awful lot of people turn around and say, oh, don't use Hyper-V for Linux, it doesn't work very well. Uh, well, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Um, install a Linux distro on Hyper-V and see if it works. It, it, it does. Um, and again, you know, VMware vSphere, Hyper-V, Promox, um, all the other hypervisors, they perform as well as one another. So, just to recap, again, we had a test Linux media server running on Ubuntu Server 2204 LTS running on Hyper-V. We had a Windows Server 2022 uh, BDR backup server running on VMware vSphere. Uh, and the purpose of this demonstration using Carbon I Migrate um, was to replicate, migrate the workload from VMware vSphere to Hyper-V and to migrate a workload of virtual machine from Hyper-V to VMware vSphere at the same time. So let's just have a little look at what we've got and where we are. So I'm connected into my BDR backup server via RDP like I was before. Uh, remember, I actually basically created this test for EE video um, and I basically copied this uh, 10 gig VMware vCenter Server 8 ISO. So there it is. Um, and if we look here, BDR backup underscore replica is running on Hyper-V. Woo! Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and if we actually basically have a little look at our um, the virtual machine that was running on VMware vSphere, it's currently off. So it's failed over, migrated, whatever you want to call it. Job done. Um, let's have a little look at um, our Hyper-V server. Um, we had a test-LMS, our test Linux Ubuntu 2204 LTS server running on Hyper-V and we wanted to live migrate um, that to our EE lab VMware vSphere environment and here it is test replica and just to prove that that works I can hit play um, and I've still got a connection in uh, to my Logitech Squeezebox transporter in the office here and I can still play my music. Um, so, again, um, if you have a project uh, that you have a number of virtual machines in production, I cannot recommend... Um, Carbonate Migrate really is the tool to use in your environment. If you want to do it the old-fashioned way, if you don't want to do it the manual way, if you want to use disk to VHD and save some money, if you want to use VMware Converter or Starwin V to V, um, if you really want a proper product uh, to migrate your virtual machines with very little effort, uh, with and let the product do all the heavy lifting for you, then use uh, Carbonate, Migrate, OpenText, Migrate, which is, as I saw 10 years ago when I looked at the product, it's the dog's bollocks of product. Uh, and to be honest, with you, there are not many things in technology that basically, you know, really make, you know, a little bit of wee come out in my pants, really, to be honest with you. You know, when I look at, applications and products and and I think if I go back far enough uh, to the first time I actually basically saw vMotion work um, in a VMware v3 environment you know I thought to myself you know wow you know that that's just fantastic and I think really the same thing in using double take products they just work and they deliver um, if you want an introduction to uh, the people that I know at OpenText Migrate or Carbonate Migrate and you actually basically want to have a little look at their products in more detail, then please reach out to me. 
but in the meantime, that's really all I've got to show you in this video that I've been wanting to do for 10 years now. Um, and um, it's one that I've been keeping on the back burner here uh, because I've actually showed you um, how to do Dista VHD and how to use Starwind. And just coming back to the Starwind, actually, uh, the whole live migration thing has been recommended, has been recognized as an issue and a bug uh, and those guys are currently working on it and the moment I hear anything um, about the product where they fixed it they're going to let me know and I will be able to let you know but in a moment uh, it does have a little bit of an issue and it, it, it does work it doesn't work um, and I would have actually basically brought you the uh, a video on how we can use um, uh, system center virtual machine migrator or vmm sc vmm by microsoft um but i failed dismally to be able to migrate a virtual machine from vmware vSphere to hyper v using that bag of spanners um it has me flummoxed um so there's no point really me doing a video showing you that it doesn't work or I couldn't actually basically get it to work. Um, so again, many thanks for watching these videos. Um, this, I think this is the first video that um, I'm probably gonna change the branding on it slightly. Uh, so you will see a new graphic at the beginning of this video, uh, which sort of kind of encompasses really the, the three things that I care deeply about in my life, uh, and not in any particular order, uh, beekeeping, experts exchange, and still, VMware by Broadcom. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to stop swiveling around on this chair uh, because I'm probably going to break it. Uh, so come back for another Hancock's VMware half hour um, when we'll look at uh, a few more um, questions that get uh, asked at Experts Exchange. So once again, thanks so much now and goodbye.